Before we get into this video, I wanted to give a quick preface. I have the opportunity to take a look at a lot of products, but because I travel so much and because I'm constantly trying to practice and fly and build and do all these things, I run out of time to make these reviews. Now, companies send me these products and they want me to take a look at them and post about them and write up all these notes, and I usually get like halfway through the stage. Like, I've literally got a notebook right here, hold on, that is like filled with notes on different products. DJI Osmo or Rapid Fire or whatever it is, there's tons of different things. and. What happens is I kind of get down that first stage of like forming my opinions about it, what I'm excited, what I don't like, what I do like, and then never make a video or never make a post. I feel really bad about that and I and it's and I feel like I'm leaving a lot of opportunity on the table, not just for myself necessarily, but for other people to kind of learn from my understanding of these products or to spread that information, whatever it is. More so when I'm working with these vendors, I'm basically taking all of this product and saying, hey, I want to give it away. And and that's always my end goal is I want to take these, these products, I want to look at them, I want to form an opinion so that everybody can kind of share in that and understand some of my thoughts. And then I want to take that product and give it away. Now, I haven't been able to do as much of that as I want. So what I've been kind of searching for is another solution. How do I make product review videos and get them all done and live the life that I'm already doing and make all of the normal content that I've got and I get overwhelmed. The p solution that I proposed to my friend Sean Ames from Team Heart of America was what if you came in and did the videos and we both kind of worked together to build our opinions about those products so that we can make more content, give more things away and, and build this, this community, this part of this channel that, that helps kind of bring people together around product reviews. So we're gonna try it out for a while. It's gonna be a little bit different. I hope you'll bear with us as we kind of figure out this new format. I hope that you'll trust that our end goal is to, to serve you guys. Give us patience, give us your feedback, give us any thoughts you have along the way. And if you have things that you wanna see reviewed by me and Sean, by all means, drop a message in the comment and say, hey, take a look at this, hey, take a look at that. But I hope that over time we can work together to deliver awesome some content to you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that you enjoy what Sean has to say. And in the meantime, stay flying. Big time thanks to Nurk for the opportunity to help make these videos. My name is Sean Ames from Heart of America FPV. And uh, today we're going to dig into the rapid fire. So I go to a ton of races. And actually just this week we got back from the International Open. While I was there, I was counting it up and I've actually attended almost exactly 100 drone races since I started doing this stuff. The International Open was quite a bit different in one big way and that is there was very, very little complaining about video. Now, International Open in the past, uh, other events, all the races you go to, you always hear people just belly aching about crappy video. And this year, there really weren't many problems. There was a couple situations where like equipment wasn't working. When the races happened, the video was pretty freaking good to the point to where the timing system wasn't capturing people and they still had okay videos. So there's three big things that have changed in drone racing to help make this possible. The first one is our buddy Chris Thomas's hammer. If you remember from the OG International Open, somebody was broadcasting on 200 milliwatts and they got the hammer. And that was pretty controversial. I'm not gonna get into whether or not it was a good thing or a bad thing that a, that a drone got the hammer. We'll leave the internet trolls to that. Honestly, people take the power output of their VTX much more serious now after that's happened. You know, maybe it's just we've learned something. Maybe they're afraid of the hammer. I don't know what it is. The second thing is our buddy Joe Scully. Now, Joe is the ground station whisperer. There is nobody else on earth as capable and as dedicated as Joe is to making sure that there is good video on the ground stations. And he puts an incredible amount of effort into making sure that all the antennas are positioned exactly right, that polarization is correct. He even looks out for you, and if your quad looks like it might be weak on the line, he's gonna let you know so you have good video in your heat. So Joe and their ground stations and their team is a big part of the reason why video at I.O. was so excellent. Now it's pretty obvious being at I.O. that most pilots have switched over to using a very specific goggle module. To the point that I even went over to our buddy Brain Drain's photo album from I.O and pulled a bunch of pictures I'll put right up here that show you all the different pilots that are using this exact same module. And this module is the Immersion RC Rapid Fire. Now this is not your standard diversity goggle module from 2017. 
Yes, there's two places to plug in antennas, but whereas a diversity module chooses which antenna is best to display in your feed, the rapid fire and other modules like it that are coming onto the market, they take the two antennas and in some manner, I don't really know, they blend the two images together to give you the best image possible. The other thing that they do is they actually look for sync pulses that's actually embedded in the video signal from the camera itself. And they use that sync pulse to lock on to a specific feed, to a specific camera. And I think that's the thing that's made the biggest difference for drone racing is the lack of interference in your video feed. Now that feature made things pretty rough early on to the point that I even pushed back quite a bit on the guys at Immersion because when the Rapid Fire first came out, it did not sync well to all cameras or OSDs or VTXs. I'm not sure where the issues were, but essentially that sync pulse is something that's standardized. For a camera to be certified as PAL or NTSC, it's supposed to meet certain standards. And there was equipment on the market that was not outputting at those standards. And unfortunately, if the standard was off, then the rapid fire would lose sync and you'd be flying along and your screen would start to scroll up, turn like black, dark black and white, and flip out and you'd crash and it was awful, it was a bad day. And uh, I spent some time definitely trolling Immersion RC about this because it was a little frustrating uh, that their product came out and these cameras, although they weren't to spec, they were already on the market and they released their product that wasn't working with it. Now the upside and the thing we definitely have to give Immersion credit for is the fact that the Rapid Fire actually has a USB port on it. And just within a few weeks of releasing the Rapid Fire, having all the issues of uh, the module actually losing its lock with certain cameras, OSDs, or VTXs, Immersion came out and started doing a bunch of really great firmware updates. Now personally, I've been running the Rapid Fire module from the very beginning to the point that early on, I had some crashes due to the module actually losing lock to my camera. Very frustrating, but when they came out with that firmware update, essentially there was a mode one, which was the original rapid fire unicorn dust where it does the frame blending and the lock to the sync pulses and in a mode two that still does the frame blending and stuff but the lock itself is not as touchy and if your camera is slightly off spec it's not going to just automatically lose sync so that's kind of a big deal personally ever since they've come out with mode two i've left it on mode two and had phenomenal results along the way they've made some errors they did a firmware update where all of a sudden your dvr was all in slow motion pretty quickly they came out with another update that fixed that they're not always good about admitting it when they make a mistake but they do fix it so i guess that's just drone product manufacturers but when you update the firmware there's some cool things you can get into here let's take a look at the goggle module when i turn it on Look at that. Now, when you update the firmware, you've actually got the ability to add a custom picture. Totally doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect anything, but if you're vain like I am, maybe that's fun to do. Inside the menu, it's just like anything else, right? You've got your menu here. This is more of a joystick situation, so you can change you know, your, your bands and your channels. Pretty easy there. Definitely not a hand model. Just like any old module, you have band, you have channel. You've got the tools page here. You've got a spectrum analyzer. You got a band scanner, you can have favorites. Most club races now, it seems like they're working on IMD 6C as a channel set. So you can set that channel set up perfect. I've got mine set up that way. In there makes things pretty stinking easy. One thing that came in super handy at IO is their model locator. Now this is neat. As you can hear, it's audible. You can leave your goggles on your head. You kind of think of it as hot and cold or Marco Polo, but essentially, as you get closer to your quad, it's gonna get louder and faster. As you get further away, it gets quieter and more spaced out. So um, there were several times when I was helping the Maddie Hatter track down a quad she had crashed that uh, this came in super duper handy. And I like the fact that you don't have to look at it. You don't have to, there are bars that's gonna show you um, the signal strength, but it does work with Omni antennas. You don't necessarily need a patch. And uh, I just like the fact you don't have to look at it. Next, you've got your mode. So like I said, we've got mode one, which is gonna be the best. Mode two, which is gonna be great for everything. And then mode three is essentially legacy mode. That's gonna operate your module just like the old school 2017 diversity modules where you got antenna one, antenna two, and it's gonna select the one that's got the best reception at that moment. And then finally, you have OSD settings. Now this has gotta be the best thing that they've done in the rapid fire other than just the, the quality of the reception itself. But in the OSD, when you change channel, so you can be on a certain band and then you can actually use your fat shark buttons, holy cow, to change the channels. And when you do, it actually shows up in your goggles which channel you're switching to. 
and even shows you RSSI for those channels. So that comes in super handy. If you're at a race, you need to switch channels, or if you don't know what channel your quad is on, you plug it in, look in your goggles, and you can see, oh my gosh, this one's really strong. It's the one that's right next to me. The fact that you've got the channels that pop up in there and you know which channel you're switching to in the OSD, you don't have to take them off. That's pretty cool. I love the fact that the Fat Shark buttons actually work. And actually you've got the ability in the module screen itself menu there, you can decide whether or not you wanna show your lock on screen, you can show your RSSI on screen. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different stuff you can throw in there. And the neat thing is, is this video itself might get a little bit dated, but Immersion RC is gonna be putting out more software for this, especially as competition kind of jumps up. There's the Fusion module coming out from TBS. My understanding is that TrueD now has a module that's very similar that's gonna work like this. So they're getting some competition, they're gonna have to step things up, but the nice thing is it's absolutely future-proof with the fact you've got the USB port there. So that, my friend, is pretty cool. Now, if you're wanting to get your hands on a rapid fire, do pay attention to the model of goggles you have and make sure it is compatible. The rapid fire module will fit in a normal module bay. That's not an issue, but some of the older goggles, they do not put out enough power for the rapid fire module. So there's actually a mod you have to do. It's pretty simple. My understanding is you can actually send in your goggles to have that mod done, do it yourself. I did it on Maddie's goggles. It didn't take much effort at all, but that's absolutely something you should pay attention to and make sure that uh, you don't end up having issues. Now, one big thing that NERC wanted to accomplish in actually getting the review views out is we want to give some stuff away. So we've got a rapid fire module. Ooh, hold on. Wait. Oh, we've got two rapid fire. Oh, hold on. Crap. We've got three rapid fire modules that we're gonna give away. Now two of them we're gonna give away right here on this channel. So what we need you to do is go ahead and hit that thumbs up because that's what you say on YouTube. Head down to the comments and leave one comment. Then one week from the release of this video, we're gonna run a comment selector. We're gonna do it twice and give away two modules to somebody in the continental US. Now, if you do live outside of the US and you still wanna win it, then we might give you the option to pay for your own shipping. Time will tell. The third module, now you may or may not know, I have a YouTube channel myself. It's called Heart of America FPV, where I do not a ton of reviews yet, but I definitely do some tutorials about um, some open TX stuff for team racing. I share my slow DVR, all those kinds of things. But I'm working on a video right now that I'm gonna be publishing with this video, where we talk about what it takes to get good Good video at a racing event. Like I said, IO, there was phenomenal video, but I also still saw a lot of really silly mistakes. I saw a bunch of high gain patch antennas. I saw a lot of uh, knolls of antennas pointing at the racetrack. I saw a bunch of stuff. I saw goggle modules turned on while the ground station was plugged in. So I'll be posting up on YouTube about how to have great video at a racing event. And in that video, I'm gonna give away this third rapid fire module will do the same type of thing. Comment below. I'll explain that there, but head on over to Heart of America FPV. Link will be in the description of this video. Check that out. Comment for your chance to win there and you might as well subscribe while you're over there. So guys, thanks for checking this out. Hopefully it was useful to you. And as Nurk always says, I guess uh, stay flying.